and welcome to a quick discussion of Undertale. So, this year is the 5th anniversary of the release of the PC version of the game. And to celebrate, I decided to take a quick look at the game's hard mode. So to access hard mode, type in the name Frisk. And it will actually warn you if you type in this name. This name will make your life hell. Proceed anyway? Yes. So hard mode is very similar at first to normal mode. We have this familiar hallway, we have an encounter with Flowey the flower, um, but it will pick up very quickly. <laughs> So I wanted to go over some things about this game, because I did a Let's Play a few years ago, and my opinion on the game has actually changed a little bit over time. Back and forth, actually. So, when I first discovered the game, which was very hard not to know about Undertale going into it because of how much of a phenomenon it was in 2015, I basically knew spoilers, which is kind of not how you should play this game. You should definitely try to play this game blind if possible, because uh, there's a lot of cool things that this game does, and knowing about it in advance does diminish some of the impact. Um, so don't be like me, please, if you have not played the game already, try to play it blind. Um, that being said, since it's been five years, I'm pretty sure most of the spoilers are very well known, sadly. Uh, but I still recommend it. It's still a really good game. Uh, it's a turn-based RPG, um, with the main gimmick being the ability to kill or spare enemies. Obviously, um, the story actually changes depending on which you do. So, for example, if you kill all of the enemies, uh, you are on the genocide route, as it's called. If you spare all the enemies, uh, you're on the pacifist route. I have only done pacifist route runs to their completion for a few reasons. Um, and that's actually my biggest problem with the game. I don't really like the route system very well. Um, I really like true pacifist as a route except for one area, but I don't really think the genocide route was exactly done well. Um, it's basically designed to kind of be like anti-fun because you're killing all the monsters. You're not making friends with anybody. So you're definitely getting less story out of it. And I feel like you're also getting less um, interesting gameplay, actually, because it's actually kind of fun, the challenge of sparing everything. Um, another problem I have with the um, genocide route is Having to kill all the monsters means you spend a lot of time grinding. Um, this game has random encounters, so there's a lot of just spinning in circles waiting for an encounter, and then uh, killing said monster, and doing this until you get an area counter down to zero. So it's just not the most exciting route, I would say. Um, so yeah, we can fight, you have a little action command, uh, but we're not going to do that, we are going to talk to the dummy. Um, the pacifist route, because there's sort of like a- almost a puzzle mentality to it, you don't get experience, but you do get gold for sparing enemies. Um, so you stay at level 1 if you play a pacifist route. Um, a true pacifist route, meaning you don't kill any enemies. You can do kind of a mixed route, which is like the neutral route, but you don't get the best ending. Um, you also don't get the worst ending, by extension. Um, so far, we've only seen enemies from the normal uh, difficulty, but we, we will be seeing some new enemies shortly. Um, so, uh, the reason why... The other reason why I've never finished a genocide route um, is it's hard. <laughs> uh, there's two... There were two main bosses that are really difficult, I would say. Um, the one I did within three tries, which impressed me at the time. It's like, okay, I'm not sure how that went so well. The, the final boss of the route I tried about 20 times and then just gave up and did a pacifist route because of a gimmick in the game 
that I'm going to explain a little bit later because there's actually a really good um, showcase of this. As, as you might have noticed, I did practice a little bit of this opening part, so I did have a save file. Um, that is important to note, that is one of Undertale's main gimmicks and is actually really cool. Uh, but, we, but we won't be seeing it for a little bit. Um, we have this dramatic hallway, uh, I guess this would be a good time to mention that I really like the soundtrack of Undertale. Um, it's got that kind of chiptune sound, but a lot of the compositions are very elaborate and fun. Um, sadly my favorite song is like within the last third of the game, so won't be hearing that, but we will technically, I think, be hearing a, a variant of it, actually. Um, so this game likes um, motifs, basically. A lot of songs get reused later on um, for dramatic effect, and I really like that actually. Um, so another cool thing about Undertale's soundtrack is that the um, there were a couple really rare songs. Like there's actually a song exclusive, to my knowledge, exclusive to um, the. Uh, hard mode route, which is the battle theme, and there's actually a couple unused songs that are actually really good. Um, one specific song that I'm not sure if I should say the name of because the name is actually a spoiler even though it's an unused song. Um, and the music is just really great. I think it was mostly composed by Toby Fox, who's the main designer of this game. So, uh, Toriel will ask us what are cinnamon or butterscotch preferences. But she will be able to guess somehow. And the reason is... She... has sort of gone through this before. Um... Basically, when you have already played the game, certain events are, like, saved. Um... To the point where the characters will actually remember things. Um, it's actually really cool. I I wish uh, it didn't permanently mess up your save file though, and that's another reason why I've never actually finished the uh, genocide route because it does um, permanently affect pacifist routes even because some dialogue and some scenes actually change. Um, so for those reasons, I've just never finished it. Like, even if I beat the boss, I wouldn't actually have saved, because then I would mess up my save file. Um, so I would have beaten the boss and then quit out and restart the game. Uh, so this is the final Froggit. It is a new enemy. Um, new battle music, which is actually really good. I wish this was actually in the main game, because it's really solid. Um, so this is why it's hard mode, because ow. Um, we did pick up the candy, so we should be fine since it's only the ruins. We don't have to worry too much about item management. Um, this is a tile puzzle. Um, I want to see if I still have it memorized. Cool. Um, the floor will break if you step on the wrong tiles, so uh, if you fall down, there's a pattern of leaves that basically show the right way to go. Um, so here we have a much more complicated fight because we have um, multiple enemies at a time. And they basically attack in tandem, which is really, really scary. <laughs> I am debating running, but I think I can manage this with one gone. Um, and I can heal if I need to, but I don't think it'll be necessary. Um, so... Basically, these two enemies, even though they're the same type, actually need slightly different commands. One needs its face fixed uh, to be spared, and the other, I think you just lie down. Never mind. Um, let's try this then. One time I did lie down and it seemed to work, um, but I guess not this time. So it's not attacking us, so we can spare it. Like so, again, no experience, only gold. Uh, gold isn't even used for a whole lot, I would say. Um, buying items, like gear, you can buy weapons, but why would you unless you're playing a route where you're actually killing the monsters? Like, equipping weapons is not useful at all in Pacifist. Armor is, but not weapons. Um, 
Here's a little puzzle that I find slightly annoying. I'm debating running because I'm greatly outnumbered. Um, or at least healing. But yeah, I find this puzzle slightly grating because um, basically you just have to repeatedly talk to the rock uh, to get it to move onto the switch. Which is like kind of cute the first time, but I feel like um, on repeat playthroughs it kind of takes a while. Uh, especially with random encounters like we just saw. Um, thankfully we got a save point right here that does restore your health. Every save point has really good uh, text. The flavor text is really good in this game in general. Uh, and the writing also is really solid. Um, so Toby Fox originally started out um, making like earthbound ROM hacks and the earthbound influence can definitely be felt at times. It still has a very unique identity to its humor, um, but it definitely feels earthbound, like tangential or inspired. Um, so this is Naps the Blue Key is our first technical boss battle. Um, I'm not even sure how to win this fight because I haven't done this in a while. Um, obviously you can technically kill Naps the Blue Key, but, he, but he's a ghost so... I think he even says something like, oh, he was just playing along if you actually fight him. Um, so this is one of my favorite songs, but not in this form. Um, the a remix towards the, yeah, the one-third mark um, is one of my favorite songs in the game. I don't know how much this fight is different. It feels very similar. Um... But yeah, it's basically kind of almost like survival at this point. Um, a lot of the bosses feel like that on Past Fist, where it's more about surviving the boss than actually, um, like, uh, doing specific prompts. Um, so yeah, we basically just cheered up Naps to Bluke. Um, Alright, so, um, what's up here? The intended path, so we're going this way. Uh, this is actually really necessary if you want to skip a boss fight in um, the main game, but obviously it doesn't do us much good here. But I'm still gonna buy it because I could use the healing item. Um, but we do have a save point right here, so we, we can restore our health uh, without using the item. But yeah, I would still recommend Undertale now. Uh, weirdly enough, I went through a period where I kind of didn't like Undertale, and it's kind of hard to explain why. Um, I think I got burnt out on the game. Like, I really, really liked the game when I first played it, and during that initial, like, wave of hype that everyone was basically experiencing with this game. Um, but then I feel like some level of, like, almost cynicism started to kick in at some point. Um, and I ended up going through a period of just kind of not liking um, as much. Yeah, so over time, more recently especially, I've really hit a point where it's like, yeah, Undertale was a good game. <laughs> um, with some distance to all of the extreme positivity and negativity surrounding the game, I feel like, yeah, I, I genuinely think the game is really good. Um, my favorite thing is definitely the characters, though. A lot of characters are really well done. Um, but I also, I think the gameplay loop is fun enough. Um, I'm generally not sure what I'm supposed to do in this fight, and I might die. <laughs> um, by the way, green items you actually want to hit, because that will give you health back. Um, I am not surprised I died. I am actually surprised I didn't die sooner, because yeah, hard mode is no joke. It's unfinished, sadly. Um, I'm pretty sure even at the end of hard mode, it's like, it'll happen if it happens kind of a thing. No real guarantee. Uh, I kind of wish it would happen someday. Obviously not anytime soon, because Deltarune and also Toby Fox getting to do things like making a remix of Megalovania for Smash Bros, or, um, getting a song into Pokemon, things like that. Um, so yeah, he's a little busy, so I, I think it's really cool that he's had so much success starting out from 
humble beginnings and like earthbound uh, fan projects and then uh, like going on to make Undertale and then getting to have Megalovania and the Smash Bros. It's just, it's really cool. Um, and as far as indie games go, I kind of feel like, you know, for one of the main indies in like Smash Bros, this does deserve it. Um, yeah, this is a mess. So like, it's a weird mix of like, it's an RPG, but it also is kind of a bullet hell at the same time. It's it's a really weird gameplay system, but really fun um, and unique. And there's a lot of things about this game that are just so unique. Um, and that's a big strength of Undertale, it's just how really unique it is. Uh, even now, I can't really think of much like it. I feel like a lot of games were trying to do like, meta commentary for a while, and uh, none of them really hit the same heights that Undertale did, like with, you know, your save file affecting dialogue and future playthroughs, things like that. Um, it feels like games tried to do things like that for a while, and then just kind of gave up, it feels like, because no one could do it as successfully. Um, but yeah, on the whole, I, I don't even think it's that expensive. It's like 15 on console and like ten dollars on steam and i'd say it's worth it for that much even if you already kind of know what you're getting um uh when you or like if you know what you're getting into from the start like if you have been spoiled on some things i still think the game is relatively worthwhile um just as a relatively fun experience um i definitely underestimate how hard hard mode would actually be um, it does not mess around. I'm not, like, a big fan of bullet hell games, clearly, um, hence why I'm taking so much damage. Um, so yeah, I, I have actually cleared this once. I, uh, it was a long time ago, so I don't remember, like, the particular strategies. Um, I also feel like Undertale's a weird game that I can replay despite knowing spoilers. Um, Maybe partly because I did know spoilers on my first playthrough, so I've never really had a blind playthrough. Um, so I tend to play it more for like the character moments and, um, yeah, the character moments and like interactions, the gameplay, uh, the music. So yeah, it's a different approach than going in completely blind, but I still think it's worthwhile in any case. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a unique experience that I feel like is worth going through at least once. Again, it's not even that expensive, but yeah, I feel like I could replay this game despite being a very story-heavy game because it's kind of short for an RPG and it's also fairly, um, it's somewhat replayable because of having different routes and different, like, interactions depending on if you've already played and things like that. Um, I don't know if that's right. Uh, we're probably gonna call this soon. Um, please tell me this is the right switch. Uh, we're actually almost to the end of the main ruin section, sadly, which we're not, we're not gonna get there at this rate with these enemies. Um, yeah. I think I am going to call it there, though. So, to summarize, I definitely have come around on this game. I went from really liking it to kind of being mixed on it, to now really liking it again, which is actually kind of a nice feeling. Um, and yeah, I still recommend playing it if you somehow haven't played it and also somehow haven't been spoiled on it with how prolific it was for a while. But on that, that note, I am going to call it here. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for another discussion.